Are the slides posted? Are the slides posted? Okay. Well, Okay. I just posted the slides. If you guys want to check them out. Okay, everyone, welcome to lecture eight, Intro to React, taught by Nitya and I. Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna move this so it's like less than I... Okay, um, so a couple of weeks ago, I showed you guys this slide, and this is when, uh, the first time I showed you guys this was when we just started JavaScript, so I kind of explained to you like what is the flow of like how to create websites, right? Like where are we going with all these ideas? So we started off with HTML, kind of like the bare bones basics, like what gives the backbone and the structure to our house, which is our website. Then we started with CSS, where it's like, what gives our website like colors? Like what gives flavor to our house? And then we did JavaScript, which is like, how did we set up you know, the electricity in the house? How did we make our website smart and like interactive? Um, and you know, all those like cool stuff. Maybe we have like, I don't know, game room in the house, something, but that's all done through JavaScript. And now we're gonna be putting it all together finally into uh, the front end portion. And then we're gonna connect it to the back end portion, which we're gonna explain. But the front end portion basically combines all these three things we learned into one super powerful tool. And after this as motivation, you guys are gonna be able to do and build cool websites that look like this, build like tic-tac-toe and like, I don't know, a bunch of other cool stuff. Um, and yeah. And what we're gonna be using to build all these cool websites is React. So you guys might've heard of like react.js uh, or like React. And basically what it is, it's a, um, it's a JavaScript library for building interfaces. So it lets us compose complex UI from small and isolated pieces of code called UI components. So let's say, you know, this, first of all, this is like a lot of words and I don't expect you guys to understand all this, but just imagine we're trying to build something like this, right? Um, and you guys can see there's like, you know, you guys know how, all know how to do this. Like there's an image somewhere and we're like putting it like, you know, the, this many pixels away from this side of the screen. And then re relative to that, we're doing like this other image and copy right next to it. And another image with paste, like if you guys did this in HTML, CSS and JavaScript, like this would take you hours, like just to build this one thing. It'd be super annoying. And you guys would be like, 
uh, building websites sucks. And like, I'm never going to create Instagram just because like, it takes me five hours to just do this like toolbar right here. So why use frameworks and libraries at all? Like React, like why don't we just use like HTML, CSS, JavaScript? And the reason is it just makes your life easier. Like if you guys are going to do everything from scratch, it's going to take so much longer. And basically these libraries, what you do with them, they just have a lot of built-in functionality that allows you to do things really quick and easy. So once you guys get familiar with the syntax, you guys already understand what goes on underneath from understanding HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now you're just adding one layer on top of it, which is like predefined components and like predefined libraries and mechanisms for you guys to build a bunch of things that are already like features inside of websites super, super fast. So that's the reason why we use like libraries and frameworks in general. But there's like a bunch of them out there, right? There's like Vue, there's next.js, which is like, I don't know, we'll get into that later. Um, but why use React instead of like the rest of these? So a little history on React. It was built back in 2013 by Facebook. And now Facebook or Meta runs like all their applications through React. And they built it to basically just be super fast and super easy to use. So React is by far the most popular framework used today. Um, I think there was some study that showed like over 80% of like websites that use frameworks use React. Um, and it's the easiest to work with and has a huge amount of online support. So online support is basically like Stack Overflow, right? Like if you have a problem with something, you're going to go on Stack Overflow and you're going to be like, why does like this button not work? Why does this not work? 99% of the entries you're going to find are using React, which is why React is such a useful tool because like one, it's just super efficient, super nice. And two, it's super easy to work with. Um, so it has like really fast development speed. It combines HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which is what I talked about. Uh, the app performance is like really good. Um, basically means like, you know, just speed, uh, efficiency, rendering times, stuff like that. Super customizable for everything as well. Um, testability, if you want to like test your applications after you run them. Dynamic rendering, which is something we're going to talk about. And state, which is another thing we're going to talk about. Um, but basically, all you guys got to know that all these things combine to make React a really, really powerful tool whenever you're building websites. Cool. So the first thing we're going to do is run through the installation process. So if you were here for lecture last week, you should have Node and NPM. Um, just to confirm that you guys have it, open up your terminal on your computer. Um, I'll give you guys some time to do it. And just run Node-V and NPM-V. It'll output some like Node version and some NPM version um that you guys should be using and or like if 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 it outputs some version it basically means that you have it installed um and if you don't just go to nodejs.org and install i'll give you guys like a minute or two to look through this just to make sure you guys have everything by the way are there any questions on like react libraries how we're putting this all together like i know it might not seem clear exactly what we're getting ourselves into but if there's any like preliminary questions i'll be happy to answer them yeah. 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 You mean like syntax wise? You mean like syntax? Yeah. I mean like syntax um, like the HTML. Like yeah. You have to use class name instead of class. Right. Right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, there's a lot of things I think in React that are going to feel like it's a lot. But if you start understanding what each component is and what it does and what everything means, you guys are going to have a good time. Like, it's going to be easy to understand the rest. So, yeah, there is a lot of syntax that you guys are going to have to go through at first. Um, but once you kind of get over, every, every, over everything, it's like super, super exciting. I mean, it's really like, such a powerful tool. I mean, the first time I saw it, I saw like a bunch of these like libraries, a bunch of these like files that they give you when you download it. But I'm gonna try and walk through all of them with you in lecture so you guys like have no confusion about what's happening. And then through your guys' like tic-tac-toe problem and this like blockstagram problem homework we have for you guys, um, that's also gonna be like super helpful in like you understanding what React is and like what it can do. Okay, cool.
Are we like all set on this stuff? Anyone need more time to do this? Anyone have, everyone has it installed? Okay, cool. Now we're gonna go through some useful tools before we get into React. Um, so when you guys are building out your projects, it's gonna be pretty annoying to like, when you have a huge code, like some of your code like might be scrambled. Some like might have like weird indentations here and there. So most of you guys probably have this if you went through 61A or 61B. Um, I don't know, professors recently emphasized it, but if you don't, open up your VS code or like whatever IDE you're using um, and go into the extensions on the side. I can go through it with you guys, but basically you guys are gonna wanna install something called Prettier. Um, it's basically a tool that helps reformat our code and make it pretty. So we download Prettier from the VS code extensions and then you're gonna to wanna to change two settings in your VS code just to make sure that it works. So I'll go through it with you guys real quick. So if I open up my VS code, um, I'm gonna to go to extensions on the side and then I'm gonna type in prettier. I'll go here, I already have it installed. Basically just click install. And then what's this gonna do is it's gonna automatically format your code as you guys go through it. So just in case you guys have like weird annotations or stuff, it's super helpful when you're like working on like big projects and you don't wanna like constantly worry about indentation and whatnot. It's gonna automatically like reformat things for you. Um, and yeah, overall it just makes your experience like coding a lot easier. Okay. And then once you've done that, go to your settings, I think, wait, let me see. Uh, settings. Yeah, go to your settings and then go to prettier dot require config. And so it's gonna say, it's gonna have this like checkbox and then basically you wanna set that to true. Um, so, you uh, you want to like enable it um, to do its work. And then also what you're going to want to do is go into your editor um, dot format on save. Um, this one I like to use a lot. Basically everyone uses this. So like right when you save your code, it's formatted. Um, and that's like really going to help you or else you're going to have to run some like manual scripts later on. Um, so I would just say, it's better to just have it on save so that every time you guys save your code, it's like automatically going to format for you. Um, so yeah, that's pretty nice. And again, the commands are on this slide. So I'm just going to like keep going. Okay. Cool. Another one we really like to use in the industry is ESLint. Um, and basically ESLint just enforces code style in projects. So when you start new projects, uh, you're gonna wanna use ESLint to keep your code consistent. Now, what ESLint basically does is that you can set different types of rules. Right? Like let's say you're working on a project, right? Let's say you just join Google. Google is basically gonna throw you an ESLint and they're gonna say, we don't want you to use like for each loops. We're only gonna want like, regular for loops or like this kind of stuff, right? So basically ESLint in your own personal projects just enforces code style so that all your code is consistent. You're not like doing one thing somewhere and then doing it a completely different way somewhere else. And this basically makes your code like a lot more readable, right? Cause like if you share it with people or like you're submitting this code for review or like someone's looking at your code, they're not gonna wanna see like 15 different styles of like how to do the same thing um, or like 15 different like formats and whatnot. So basically ESLint combines with Prettier to just make your code a lot more efficient and concise. I'm not gonna go through exactly how to set up ESLint um, just because you're really supposed to do it every time you start a new project. Um, but in the notes um, of like lecture content and on like material, uh, you guys can look it up and there's literally just a step-by-step -step guide on like how to go through ESLint. It's super easy, literally. Uh, I think you also just like run a command in your terminal and then you download the extension and then ESLint is like automatically in your project. Um, so yeah, when you guys are starting new projects, it's super useful for like basic projects. You don't have to do it, um, but it's good thing to get like used to 
and accustomed to just because it's a really nice tool. Okay, getting started. So let's open up our terminal. Okay, boom. Um, I'm going to make a new directory. Oops. Okay. Now I'm going to run this command right here, which basically now creates my first React app. So I'm going to say npx. Let's actually put this a little bigger. I'm going to say npx create oops sorry hold on this is my here uh npx create react app and then I'm going to call it just my app you guys can call it whatever you want but uh my app is a pretty useful tool also, if you're ever wondering like why in like HTML or like website naming conventions, we always have like a dash in between words. That's just because like when websites were originally created, um, it would only render dashes as uh, spaces, like in terms of naming conventions. Now you can really like do a whole bunch of things because like the web, is, web has evolved a lot, but that's just kind of a naming convention that's like stayed consistent over time. So if you ever like, are wondering about the casing or like how to name things, hyphens are always good in between words. Anyway, so I'm gonna run this and it might take a little bit, but basically what this command does is um, it's now creating a React project uh, in this folder that I just wanted to run it in. Um, so it's creating like all of the, it's like downloading all like the external like libraries we're about to use, like dependencies um, and all of this like, metadata and a bunch of other like useful tools we're like putting together and we're now putting into this project just so that we can um, get started you know working on something um anyway do we have any questions maybe like you thought of one about react or like what it is or like why we use it and not just like html css javascript or how it even relates to those three if you're even confused about that like anything Yeah. Yeah. I've had that error before too. Um, are you on your desktop right now? A folder that you created? There's um while this is loading, I'm going to show you something. Um, you said it was like, what did you say the error was? Can't, there's like global installation doesn't work for. Yeah. I've actually had this. I don't know, try this command, it might work. Um, I saw something before. I had this problem really like a couple weeks ago. Uh, I guess you can do this and then rerun it. Yeah, I would try doing this. This is like, I think a common solution and then rerunning uh create react app but one of those two things should work if it doesn't just you can come to me after class and i can help you out okay good terminal okay perfect so on your terminal it outputs a bunch of stuff it's like yay success we created like a react app um, so now if i look into this folder i see that my app is there and i'm like cool what's in here a bunch of stuff. Uh, let's find out. Oops. Let's 
go here. And then let's actually, I'm going to do this in VS Code just so you guys can follow along. Um, let's close this. Let's say file open. And then you're going to want to like find wherever you put your your app and just like open that whole like main folder my app that your app was created in so now you're going to see something like this any questions on anything thus far start Okay, cool. So this is where the magic happens. Now, let me talk you guys through what we just like created. Cause usually we're just used to like some index.html and then some like CSS folder and then like some scripts folder, right? So that's all technically still here. It's just that when we run these commands, React will automatically create it for us. And then we're gonna, they added a little bit on top of it just so that we can manipulate some cool stuff. So I'm going to walk you guys through all the files just because whenever like people teach this, when you first like learn, or at least how I first learned, they're just like, yeah, there's just these things, just focus on this. But like, no, I'm going to teach you guys everything you buy this. Like if you have any confusion on any file or any like singular folder, please talk to me because like, I want you guys to understand this. And I don't think it's that hard to understand, which is why I don't really understand why it's not taught, but okay. There's three folders and then a couple files on the bottom. The first folder is something called node modules. So basically we installed node last week and you guys just checked your node version. And basically what node is, is um, it's node is a JavaScript runtime. Uh, it's just a JavaScript environment that your computer uses to execute Java, J JavaScript code. So the reason we use node is because like, uh, if you guys remember, we were using like our browser uh, to run like our JavaScript scripts and like use our console to see like what happened. So basically node is just that, but in your own machine. Um, I, I think this is all explained to you guys last week as well, but yeah. So basically that's what node is. And then NPM is just package managers that essentially group together a whole bunch of folders and files that are really necessary for you guys to use. And like a bunch of assets, um, that's just going to be like really easy to use. And then we have this public folder. So this public folder is just like, by convention, we have it. Um, some people like don't have a public folder. It just kind of depends on your project. A public folder is automatically created because usually this is like what out, what's like outwardly facing. So here it is, here's our index.html. And we're like, whoa, it looks pretty weird, but we kind of recognize most of this, right? There's like some doc type, there's HTML. We have a head, which has like a bunch of these stuff. And then we have a body. And this body is saying, there's like some no script thing here, which basically means like, don't run this. Um, or sorry, no script means that if you don't have JavaScript enabled, it's just gonna be like, you need JavaScript to run this app. That's what no script means. And then we have some div element, right? And we're given an ID, which is root. So if you guys remember from like the HTML uh, lectures, the we can create any types of like div elements. And basically there's just one div element in our index.html um and we're injecting something into it so to see what's actually happening right now let's open up our terminal um let me go to Okay, yeah. Let's, by the way, if you guys didn't know, you guys can open up a terminal in your VS Code, which is like pretty nice. Um, so let's go to, let's run npm start. So basically what this does is like the equivalent of running, um, sorry.
Okay, here it is. So it's the equivalent of like when we looked into our index.html, except now it's just like, there's a couple things running behind the scenes. So we need to run a command, but basically this is the website that gets created when you start a React project for the first time. So it's like this cool little like icon, um, edit source, and there's some learn React stuff going on here. And we're like, okay, that's pretty cool. But like, how did all of this happen? It seems like pretty confusing. Um, so let's jump back into our index.html. And then if you guys wanna get out of this, um, you guys can just do control C. Okay, cool. Quick out of this. Um, so if you look at a public folder, we notice there's this like a uh, little like image here. We're not sure what it is, but we kind of recognize it. That was on the page. Um, we see another image and we see the same image like three times. We're like, what's going on? Uh, we see this like JSON folder and we see this robots.txt folder. This one is like what you really don't have to worry about. Basically this folder is just saying, um, if you like recognize that there's like some uh, like computer that's like trying to gain access to your website, you can like limit certain functionalities. This is a bit more advanced. Honestly, I never have used this in my life, but if you're like concerned with like security and stuff, maybe you work with this. I don't know. Anyway, the important stuff though is in the source. Um, so we can see there's like some CSS files, there's some JS files, and most importantly, there's this index.js, which we're going to look at right now. So we, keep, we see a couple of these import lines and we're saying like import React from React, which is basically meaning uh, React again is a library. And this is just a regular JS file. So we're trying to import React, the library, so that we can use React functionality inside of our JavaScript file. So we're saying React from React, uh, React DOM. Uh, and if you guys are interested what the React DOM is, we talked about the DOM in a previous lecture, which is basically the stack of objects that's represented inside of an HTML website. And so the reason why React is so efficient, you guys can look at this in your own time, but the real reason why React is so efficient is because they built something called a virtual DOM. And basically what this is, is like when you're going through a regular HTML website, every single object is created every time one thing in the website's manipulated. So if you just wanna change like one little like if you want to press a button and then like one thing shows up on the page, every element has to re-render on a regular HTML page. The reason React is so fast is because they built something called a virtual DOM, which is basically their version of the DOM that communicates with the regular DOM, except you only re-render what you need to re-render. So we can talk about this more in like a future lecture. It's a little more advanced and you guys can read about it if you're more interested, but that's the real reason why React is just so amazing. And honestly, it just gets me super excited. But the important thing is here, react dom dot render. And you guys can see there's some stuff going on here. And then we're saying document dot get element by ID root. But we've seen this before. We've seen document dot get element by ID. For instance, like when we're trying to access a button or like a label or something on a page, we got the element by ID and then we did something to it. So basically what react is saying here is that we have this index.html and we have this index.js. Forget everything for now. We'll explain it later or we'll get into it in a second. But what React is saying is we want to inject whatever is returned to us by this piece of code inside the document, which is the index. And we're getting the element by ID root. So the reason why all that stuff shows up, even though we just have one line of code in our HTML, is because we're doing a bunch of stuff somewhere else. And then we're saying, load all of these things into this root div element, which is why you end up with a page that looks like this. Okay. Are there any questions on the main thing? I'm about to dive into like the sub parts of this. Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no worries. You're good. You're good. Basically, React is cool. No, I'm just kidding. But um, basically, what React is doing here when you create a project is it's loading a bunch of information into one div element. So we're using React as a library to create a bunch of things happening on the side. 
And then we're saying, okay, take all of these things we just created. So imagine we take, we like, we built like, uh, like a nav bar, and then we built like an image, we built like a, like something underneath, right? It's basically saying, take all of those elements we just built on the side and just inject them into our HTML. Yeah, we'll get into what that stuff is in a second, and Nitya will talk about that more in her lecture. But I'll just try to explain the rest of the file structure. So basically, we have this index.js, and if you look a little closely, you see there's like React.strict mode, which you guys don't have to worry about for now. It's basically saying like we're running this kind of in like a safe environment. Um, but the main thing is that this app thing. Think of an app as kind of like a function. It's called a component, which Nitya will explain, but just think of it as a function that just returns some HTML to us. And basically we're saying this HTML that's returned to us, we're then we're gonna vomit it onto this root element that we found. So basically let's look into app and let's see what app.js is. And then we find it has kind of a similar style to our last file. Uh, we're importing some stuff and then we have some function and then we're returning it. And basically, What's happening here is we have some function called app and we're literally returning HTML. So what this is called is JSX. It's not regular JavaScript because we're interacting with HTML in JavaScript. So therefore we combine turns and we call it JSX. And what JSX is, is you're using JavaScript to manipulate HTML. It's actually a really cool thing um, that you might not appreciate it for a little bit, but I promise you it's, it's amazing. Um, but if you look inside the function here, you can see we're returning some div element and we have some class name app. And then we have some header, uh, which is like some header tag. It has a class name. And then look, we have the image. If we look back to our screen. We're like, oh, where did this image come up? Boom, it's right here. It's like, we have some image here that we're injecting um we have some paragraph tag which we've seen before which is saying edit and then some like code tag i don't really know what that means and then like and save to reload we're ending the paragraph and it's like boom this is all right here and then it's like we have some link which is then directing us to this link right here which is react.js.org which is exactly what this is doing so now we can kind of like see the pieces that are coming together right we see this index.html and we're like, uh, we don't see this image, but okay, let's look in index.js. Okay, index.js is like injecting this app into our root element, which is why we're getting everything. Okay, now what is app, this function that's returning everything? What's inside of this? Oh, inside of this is just some JSX, which is basically explaining some HTML elements and it's doing also you have the ability to do some JavaScript on the side, um, except this right here is basically all HTML. Um, if I wanted, I could like do some cool stuff and like, you know, let's say let X equals five, which we'll actually do right now. So let's say uh, we've seen like JavaScript like this before, right? Let X and I'm giving X um, some value, which is five. And then let's say I want to include some paragraph tag, maybe somewhere like on the bottom. Um, and if I just included some paragraph tag that said hello, let's open up our terminal, by the way, just so we can run and see everything that's happening. Let's do npm start again. This will just run our server. And we can keep this running because, um, again, React is like super nice to work in. And basically, every time you update your code, you're going to be able to see uh, it dynamically changed and boom, you can see at the bottom that there's a hello that showed up and we're like, whoa, this is like starting to make sense, right? We're interacting through these like weird layers that we're going to slowly understand over time uh, to input some HTML. So now let's do something else. So we just defined this variable X. We didn't do it for no reason. Let's go into our paragraph tag and then Let's do these semicolons and put X in here. Now, what, uh, also let's change this to an H1 just so we can like see it better. 
Now, if you look inside of this like H1 tag, you see like these like semicolons and something in there. So basically what JSX, the power of JSX is saying anything inside of curly braces is JavaScript. Everything outside is HTML. So we're kind of working in both. So you can inject JSX or JS into HTML, hence why we have JSX. So if we close this and we open up this, we can see that it says five here. And the reason for that is because we passed in the value of X into this like H1 tag. And then now it's rendering as an HTML element. And we just got the value of it through JS. This is pretty cool, huh? It's going to get a lot crazier, but it's going to be fun. Okay. Any questions about what we just did? Any questions on that? And if you're really wondering, we can do also something like, boom. So you can be really dynamic with it and do like a bunch of stuff here and there. Um, and then these other folders, by the way, we've seen them before. It's just like CSS stuff. Um, so it's basically just giving values, CSS values, um, to everything we just created. So we can see here that there's like app, which is like the governing, uh, which is basically everything inside of app. And we're saying text align, just make sure the text aligns to the center, which is exactly why this is in the center. Because if it wasn't, let's do this. It would be on the left side. Um, you can see there's an app logo. Uh, it has a height of this. I have no idea what that like metric is, but you guys can read about it if you want. There's an app header, which does some stuff, app link. So again, this is all just CSS that governs the app. And then it's like an index.css. And it's saying um, there's like some body governing stuff. And then the code tag that we saw earlier, it's just saying like format it in this way so that it comes out looking like that instead of just like regular text. Now the stuff on the bottom, get ignore. Um, so this is mainly for GitHub and it's basically, you can manipulate this file to tell GitHub what to do if you're like testing or deploying to production and whatnot. Um, you guys don't have to worry about this now. It's, it's not relevant in terms of what you're building. But again, I'm just telling it to you guys so you guys aren't confused about it later has nothing to do with your application. It's just about when you're pushing stuff to GitHub, you can do some automatic testing um, before it commits just so that your GitHub is always like pure and clean. Um, and then we have these two things, which I'm about to talk about. So package.json is, you guys don't have to understand this again, but if you're interested, I'll explain it to you. Package.json is basically just telling you like this is, the metadata of your application. So we had like a header, we had like a head, right? When we were doing HTML and that explained the, that explained the metadata of your HTML site. Now package.json is basically just listing all the dependencies and dependencies are like, what is it dependent on to actually run? So if you can see here, um, for instance, ESLint, what I talked about earlier, like that's a dependency, right? We depend on that in our code and we're, allowing it access to run and do some things into our code, right? Um, we have some other dependencies, for instance, React, which is the main one that we have, um, and some other stuff going on here. You guys don't have to understand it, but all you need to know is that this is what your website depends on in terms of like information that's downloaded from somewhere else. And the reason this is important is because let's say I share my React project with you. I've been working on this project for like a year. And I have like so much stuff in it, so many dependencies. What NPM does is because it's a package manager, you simply run NPM. It looks at this folder 
And it's like, oh, I see, I need to download this, 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 and that. MPM basically looks in this folder, sees exactly what dependencies you have and automatically downloads them to your computer. So you can instantaneously run someone else's project, even when you have none of the dependencies. So you don't have to go through, because it, it must be pretty annoying to go through like every single library that someone's importing, right? Like, let's say like I'm using some like CSS library that's allowing me like some cool functionalities, whatever. I'm importing that library. I'm importing every other library. If I download each and every one of those, it's pretty annoying to tell someone like, hey, download this library, download this library, download this library. That's all basically abstracted for you so that NPM will just download it all for you based on this package.json. So it's important, but do you need to understand it? I mean, now you do. That's the extent of what you want to understand. Package lock dot, uh, dot JSON is essentially um, a little more in-depth dive of all your dependencies. Um, again, it's not that important to really understand when you're going through it, but I want to explain everything just so that you're not confused. If you're really confused on like this other stuff, you guys can look through it. Um, again, I honestly, I never use this kind of stuff, but like if you're reporting like web vitals, so like, I don't know, maybe you're doing some testing. I don't know what this is. Or like you're setting up some tests, you can do them in these folders, but really everything else is unnecessary. Um, and yeah, these little things are called components and you'll learn exactly what they are with Nitya. And that's the end of my lecture. And we can take like two or three minutes just for like a little break. Cool. And if you guys have any questions also like feel free to come up, ask me. Yeah. Yeah, so basically this div element that we're setting an in index.html. I mean, we have a div element, right? I could just name this like, I could literally name it whatever. And if I go into my app.js, uh, so in my index.html, I have this div element, whatever. And that's what's like running my page, right? So if I go back, I'm like, whoa, where did everything go? But that's because my index.html is what's loading everything. So I'm not passing anything into it. And now when I go to my index.js, I'm saying like, uh, okay, I'm get element by ID root. Oh wait, it's not called root, it's called whatever. And now I'm passing everything back into it. So like, uh, I don't know, does that answer your question? Yeah, basically app is some, some JSX that again, we're exporting at the very end by exporting this default app. And what it's doing, it's called, it's creating a component which is the real beauty of React. You create components because they're just reusable code that we can just start using like whenever we want. So if I wanted to create like 15 apps, if I did an HTML, I'd have to copy all of this code. And then this is like a common thing in computer science, right? It's always like redundancy issues. Like I don't wanna have to like copy my code 5 million times everywhere I wanna do it. I wanna do a for loop. And then there's like a while loop and then all these things. And now we have React, right? I don't want to make like one component. If there's like one page that I'm using in all of my other pages, why would I have to rewrite that code for every single page? So like for an example, right? Let's say I have like some header. Let's say I'm Instagram and I have some footer. And like, I have like the home page. I have like the like page. I have the share page. I have like my friends and my own profile. I don't want to have to recode that footer every single time. I'm just going to put that in a component and then every time I load a page, I'm just going to load that in at the bottom. So that's basically what components are. And maybe will go like way more in depth into actually what they are and their uses. But that's kind of like a high level overview. Does that make sense? Cool. Any other questions? Yeah. Also, like if you guys are interested, there's this one extension. Uh, I think it's called React. Just look up React extension on Chrome. And basically, you can see when a website is using React. It might be like a cool thing for you if you're just like ever browsing through something and you're like, 
huh, I wonder if this page uses React. You'll find that most of them do use React. So if you're ever curious, I would suggest you do that. That's cool. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, And also the slides are like. Wait. Where are the slides? It's um. No, you're good. I just I, I like. This is backwards. Oh uh, yeah, it is. Uh, Look at that one. Yeah, I just like minimize everything, but. Let me just full screen everything. Okay. Do the opposite. Makes sense. It's probably. Better. All right, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and get started with the second half. Um, oh my God, this is backwards. One second. Okay, so let's do a little bit more JSX before I get into components. So, first of all, let's go to app.js. Um, the first thing I want to do is let's just delete everything here. I don't really need it. And then save. So I want to open my terminal. Yeah, you can see that. Okay. You can see that there's literally nothing on the page because I just removed everything. Um, and like Amir said, the coolest thing about JSX is that we can basically inject JavaScript code into our HTML. So like, let me put the X back in just to show you in a P tag. So another thing that's good about React is that it auto compiles for you. So it checks your errors like that and automatically shows up. So there's my five right there. Um, here's another cool thing that we can do with JSX. So let me make an array and I'll just call it items for now. And in this array, I'm going to put three strings, apples, oranges, bananas, like that. So say I want to render this entire list of things. Instead of individually doing it in like li tags, I can, I can use the JavaScript map function, which is very handy. Um, so I can do items.max. And notice that uh, items.map will oh, Notice that I'm using the curly braces to signify that I'm using a JavaScript variable. And map takes in a function. So I'm going to just make an arrow function that takes an item and returns a list. Oh. And make sure to also put that in curly braces. And also make sure to name your variables correctly. And as you can see, there's my wonderful list of items. And I only took, I guess, one line of code instead of three individual lines of code. Um, another thing that you'll notice is for styling, for example, you can import it from a style sheet like Amir showed you earlier, or you can do um, inline styling like this. So style takes in, oh, I spelled that wrong. Style is basically like another JavaScript variable. So I can maybe set the color to red. Oh, that should be in strings. And there, my five changed, the color changed to red. So there are many ways to do styles. I think the best way, especially in huge projects, is to make a separate file and do styling from there. But if you just need something quick like this, then do it like that. Are there any questions? 
So uh, if you're trying to like fix um uh, instead of like you should make another file for CSS, like um so let's say you like let's say you just put it all in index.css. Um you could put it in index.css and I guess in, in every component import from index.css, but just for like readability sake, especially if you're working on big projects, it's better to have separate CSS files for each component that you make. Any other questions? Okay. Now that I mentioned components, let me make components now. Um, so the first thing that I want to do is show you what maybe something would look like without a component. So like say I want to just make a button that says click me, just like that. No functionality, it's just there. But what happens if I want like six of these buttons, five? If you're just using pure HTML, then you're gonna have to copy and paste this line five times. Well, what if you want 100 buttons? Like, what if you have a huge app that requires 100 buttons? It's not worth it to have 100 lines of code for this button. So that's where components come in handy. Um, so let me show you how to make one first. So in your source, uh, right click and click new file. I'm going to call it button.js. And in this file, I want to do, I want to import React, just like this. this and now i'm just going to make a function called button and that's going to return ticket. just like that and the last thing you want to do is make sure to export the button so that you can use it in other components just like that so another thing about React is that when you return something, there has to be one parent tag outside of every other element. So I can't just have like three divs like this. See, it's already giving me an error because uh, all the JSX has to be enclosed in one parent tag. So I only need one. And in general, that's usually a div. Okay. And in this button, let me go back to app. And delete all this and copy and paste this button just like that as you can see the button disappeared nothing is happening yet why because i have not imported it so let me go ahead and do that as you can see, because I exported it, it just automatically shows up. And if I click enter like that, it even imports it from the right directory. So now, now that I have this button imported, let me just call it like this. Another thing is components can be, I think either self-closing or they can have a closing tag. I'm just going to make them self closing for now. And as you can see, the button shows up. Okay. So, what's exactly so cool about components? I just copied and pasted code, right? Here's another thing that's really important to know about components they have this thing called props. So, I can pass it in like this. And essentially, what props are, are just a way to pass data in. So you can think of React kind of like a tree where there's a parent component and then there's a whole bunch of children components. So button in this example is the child to app. Um, and props are a way for app to pass data from itself to the child button. So for example, let's say I don't want all my buttons to say click me. Then this is where props will come in handy. So I want the button to have a prop called name. And in this, I can just say, I don't know if I call it title one. And now um, 
props can be treated like a JavaScript variable. So I'm going to use the curly braces again and do props.name, save, and the button automatically changes to title one. Another thing I could do is instead of um, putting props in this parentheses, I can kind of destructure it out using curly braces again. So because the prop is name, I can just say name right here, delete props from there, and it still works. So if your component only has like maybe one or two props, you might want to destructure it like this instead of just doing props dot whatever name, function, anything. It might save time. But if you have like 10 props, I don't think it's worth it to destructure it like this. Are there any questions on components or props? Yeah. Up. An app. Did you want to see the import? Yeah. So now I can make five different buttons, but now they all have different names, just like that. Any questions on this? Is this working for people? So buttons do something, right? Maybe I also want to handle the functionality of a button inside the button component. Because if I hand, let's say my file has like 10 or 20, maybe 50 components in it, it's really difficult to manage all the functionality in one file. So that's why it makes sense to um, split out your pieces of code into components. And say this button is so generic that it can be used on multiple pages, then it's worth it again to split it out into a component instead of manually writing button because you can reuse it in many places in your code. So let me show you how to maybe try and handle functionality. So I'm going to add another prop, Let's call it clicked, click. Um, that's going to take a function. Let me just define the function in here. No. Let me close this. This bastard looks so weird. So I can do function handle click. That's just not going to take anything. And then I'll just do a simple example of alert. Click. Just like that. Oh, what just happened? Ah. So now I'm going to pass this function into here. So click is now a prop of button. So now I can use the on click property of the button and set it to props.click. No, not props. Pop start click. And now these buttons work. But I can also handle specific functionality inside here. I can, instead of passing it through props, I could just take it from the parent component instead and handle it all in the child component. Let's delete this prop. And it still would work. So this is how you use JavaScript functions in your components. So yeah, it's important if you have like really complicated functionality, you would want to 
separate that out into different files. Are there any questions on functions in JavaScript and how to handle it in React? Yeah, name is like one of the data points that we put in props. So like I defined name here in the parent component. So props are always defined in the parent component and then they're used in the child component. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna move on now to state, which is another really important thing in react so let's let's make a new component so right click on source again i'm going to call this counter and i'm going to do the same thing uh import react and then create a function And finally export it. So state essentially is a way to handle data inside the component. So props is a way to pass data between two components. State is a way to manipulate data within a component. So the way we work with it in React is through something called a state hook. So from the React um, package, I'm gonna import use state. Make sure to use curly brackets like this because there are a lot of other hooks. So use state is a hook. There's a whole bunch of other ones. Um, and today we're just gonna be using use state. So let me show you how to use it. So I'm going to have a const variable. I'm going to call it count and set count. And say use state zero. Wow. So use state basically returns an array with two items. It always works like this. The first item is the variable itself. And the second item is a function that will basically manipulate the, the variable. So it's smart in the sense that whatever variable I pass in, it'll automatically assign that type to the variable that is returned. So like, let me show you. So in this div, actually, I'm gonna make a paragraph tag and just return count. Um, I'm going to import this into app. And then make sure to call it down here. Like that. So as you can see, the zero automatically shows up because that's the initial variable that I set it to. So inside you state, you have to pass in basically the initial value. So for me, the initial value that I want to set my count to is zero, but I can also set it to like some string, I'm just gonna call it string, and it automatically change to, changes to a string. I can set it to a Boolean, so I can make it true. It's not showing anything, but I could, I could also print this out. Let's inspect this really quickly. What happened here? So slow. And on my console, you see true. So if I say zero this time, I think I might have, then zero prints out. They put the string apple in, apple prints out, and so on and so forth. 
So the initial value can be anything. It doesn't have to be an integer. It can be any value type. But for this example, it's going to be an integer. So let's say I have another button in this component. And let's say another add. Let's call it add, because now I want to change the count. So the way to do that is you have an on click function. And in it, I'm going to pass in an arrow function, which basically calls set count, which is the function that manipulates the variable. So I'm going to say set count count plus one. Okay, so my button shows up. Let's see if it works. And it works exactly like that. So I can now make a And make a subtract button. The subtract button. And now change it to count minus one. And it'll subtract. Just like that. So I could use an arrow function like this, or I could also make a function add. And that would call set count count plus one. And I can just call that here. I could call add. And it still has the same functionality. So there are two ways to do it. Sometimes if you have a function that has multiple lines, you would definitely want to define a function outside instead of making an arrow function, because then that would just really clog up your code. It would look really ugly. Okay, that was a lot. Are there any questions on state right now? Um, can I see the counter from the app.js? Counter from app.js? Sure. So I imported it like this, and then I just called the function. Yeah. Are there any other questions about state? Okay, do you guys need a minute to get caught up or can I move on? I'm going to take that as let me move on. OK, the last thing I want to cover is something called lifting state up, which is a little bit of a tricky concept. But basically, we have props to pass data from a parent to a child, right? But there's no way to pass data from a, a child to a parent. And this is because React has only one direction of flow for data, and it can only go from parent to child. It's just really bad practice to go back from child to component uh, to parent. So you never do it. So then how would I pass data from a child to a parent? That's where um, lifting state up comes in. And think of another example like this. So I have the parent component A and two children, B and C, which are basically siblings, right? What if I wanted to pass data from B to C? There's obviously no connection between them. So that means A would have to handle all of that. This is where lifting state up comes into play. It basically allows you to share data between sibling components and also from child back to parent. So let me show you how this works. Um, so back in my calendar, I have this button, right? But I already made one, my other button component. And you can consider button and counter as two sibling components. So it's a little redundant to have buttons in here. So I'm going to take these out. And counter will only, I guess, handle the count. So I'm going to take pretty much all of this out from counter. In app, I now want to use my state hook. 
like this. I'm going to make sure to import. I got to import React. Okay. Now counter is going to have a prop called count. And that's going to take in that's count state variable. And inside counter, instead of saying count, I'm going to do props.count. And make sure that I pass in props just like that. Okay, nothing changed. It's still the same. So let me delete two of these buttons. So let me make another prop for button. So in I'm going to change this one to have a title of add and this one to have a title of subtract. And each of them are going to have properties click. And inside these props, I'm going to pass in an arrow function that sets the count. And I'm going to do the same thing to this one, just like that. Count minus one. And I'm going to make sure that inside this button component, I'm not calling handle click. Instead, I'm going to call props. Whoa. Props stop click to make sure that I'm calling the right function. So the buttons changed everything. And now they work. So this is essentially lifting state up. I'm passing in a function. All the data is being kept track of inside of app but the components the child components are the ones that are actually mutating the data so this ensures that one component is keeping track of all the data but the child components can still mutate it does this make sense okay are there any questions Okay, well, that's all I have for today's lecture. I know that was a lot. Um, and you'll get a lot of practice on the homework uh, with all these concepts. Use like state components, props. These are all things that show up a lot in React and are very fundamental to this framework. So it's really important that you guys get the hang of it, especially in homework. Um, so. As for announcements, project two, the calculator project, due tonight at uh, midnight. Make sure to get it on time. Submit a GitHub pages link. And uh, homework four, which is the blockstagram, I believe, is also being released tonight and is due on March 15th. So that's next Tuesday. OK. Are there any last questions before I end it here? Oh, was project two extended? Uh, if it's on Piazza, then it's on Piazza. It's on Piazza. Yeah. Okay, yeah. then it's been extended. Please check Piazza. I did not see that. Whatever's on Piazza is accurate. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before you guys go, I have to give magic word. Oh, you wrote it? Never mind. Okay. Okay, you guys are free to go. Thank you. Thank you. Nice job. Thank you.